All right, well, I'm gonna show you guys how to uh, make one of these crystal cells, a very low power crystal cell. Uh, what you're gonna need is a copper tubing piece like this. You'll find this like at Home Depot or Lowe's in the plumbing section. About six inches long, one inch wide, copper tube. You also need magnesium ribbon, which you can get off eBay, like a pack of this, about three or four dollars. And you'll also need some uh, notebook paper, just cut the size to fit that, and some uh, tap water or distilled water. Of course, you need salt substitute by Morton. And of course, you'll need some Epsom salt. Just any old Epsom salt will do. All right, and you'll need some tape too. So uh, first off, we're going to start with a cell. We'll take the carp tubing. This one have stickers on it. And I pulled the sticker off and sandpapered it down. Uh, you want to get a piece of notebook paper and cut it the shape so it will wrap around. What I'm going to do is take that paper, use some tape, I'm using electrical tape, place it on there just like so. And then we're just going to wrap it around. Get another piece of tape and place that piece of tape on there too, just like so. And we have a fully encased this piece of tubing encased in paper. Paper mostly will act like a separator, keeping the two different metals from touching, um, as you can see. Next part is to get this paper wet with water. Uh, just dump it in there. Just get it slightly wet. You don't you don't want it too wet or start getting messy. So I'll take some salt substitute. And I'll start sprinkling it on. Then I'll take my finger, get my finger wet, and just rub it in to the paper. Add some more. Finger wet. Start rubbing it in. You will take some Epsom salt. Spread a light on there too. some uh, more salt substitute on there. Fingers wet and you start rubbing that in. Try to get into the paper's fibers the best you can. You want to do this over the water so the water will collect the salts that you don't get onto the plate. Paper get it will get like a sandpaper like texture to it. And that's what you want. Rub it in there, just like so. Basically, what the water is doing is it's acting like a. It's actually breaking down the two salts, salt substitute and essence salt, into uh, much lower levels of their energy state, um, and they allow it to combine each other together to form a very conductive crystal. 
that will form when the water is evaporating. And it's very important that the water gets to be evaporated from the paper. Very important. And as you can see, this is what you get. You notice that I have a little space right there too. Make sure you have that little space when you cut the paper. That's where you clip on with your leads. Um, but yeah, that's about it. You can see the paper is almost transparent now. This is what you want to end up with. Something like that. It's kind of look, it looks nasty, but trust me, it's worth it. And the most important step is to let this cell sit somewhere undisturbed for about 48 hours. Just let it sit there. Let, you basically want the water to evaporate from it. Because when the water evaporates, the crystals actually start to grow. This is actually how you make homemade crystal candy too, but without the, these particular salts, you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, you want it to let it dry as much as possible. Just let it sit somewhere to dry. It's very important that you let this thing dry. You, you don't want to uh, start wrapping it up right now because it's wet. When you start wrapping it up right now and start covering it, it's still going to have water in there and it's going to be galvanic. You want to avoid galvanic process as much as possible here. So it's very, very important you let this cell just sit somewhere and just let it dry. Don't, don't put it in the oven. Don't force it to heat up and dry quicker. You want to let it naturally evaporate as best it can. So just let it sit somewhere and let it dry. Alright, then after you let it dry for about 48 hours, what you want to do is get your magnesium ribbon. You'll feel it. It'll feel like sandpaper when it's dry. It'll be, you know what paper looks like when it's dry. It's, it's, there won't be any water in it. So it's very important you let it dry for about 48 hours in an open environment. I cannot stress that enough. You want to let it dry. Then once you do that, you want to take your magnesium ribbon. And it comes in rolls. And it's just stripped magnesium ribbon. You can probably see. I don't know if you can. But it's stripped magnesium ribbon. What you want to do with the magnesium ribbon, once this cell is completely dry. When it's completely, not now. Don't do it now. Once it's completely dry, you take the magnesium ribbon and you start wrapping as much magnesium as ribbon, magnesium ribbon as you can around the cell. Get as close as possible to the other magnesium ribbon strips. Wrap it up and have an excess stick out. So that be so you clip onto a lead right there. So just have a spiral of magnesium ribbon down there when this cell dries. Very important. You want after 40 hours wrap the magnesium. After 48 hours wrap the magnesium ribbon around this cell after it's dry. Very important. Let it dry. And just let it sit. Then once uh, you wrap the magnesium ribbon around, what I like to do is take some uh, electrical tape and just start wrapping the electrical tape around it tightly. I'm going to wrap it tightly around it. That's just to help protect the cell even further. Then what I do is I take some blue spray paint and I spray paint it. And that is how you, I made this particular cell over here. And you'll end up with something kind of like this. This is the cell I use on the pressure testing cell. So this is actually the pressure cell I use on I squeeze the cell and it increases the amps. But this is what you end up with. And this is what I'm talking about. You want to have a um, piece that ticks out. So that's, that's my negative lead. Right there is my positive lead. This exposed copper. And it's, it's wrapped all the way. Magnesium wrapped all the way around. And you can see I use uh, electrical tape as an insulator. Then I spray painted the whole thing. And this is what you end up with. Let it sit 48 hours and dry. It's probably the most important step out of this whole process. You want it to completely dry, okay? Very important. But that's how you make this stuff.